So here are guitars, SGs. The reason in the old days with pin routers, it made sense to route for your pickups, bridge, and tailpiece before the neck was glued on because while you're at the pin router, you want to do as much work as you can. We figured out it was more accurate to glue the neck in, and we have a CNC machine that has self-centering clamps. Oh. So we glue the or we set the guitar in the machine. The self-centering clamps will center the guitar up. It bumps up against the nut, which gets the scale, scale correct for the scale length. And then it machines the pickups, bridge, and tailpiece. So everything is exactly accurate wow. in relationship to the neck. And to the neck, yeah. yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That's why in the old days, two pneumatic bridges didn't have notches on them. Oh. Because there was that variation. To let it slide. So they put the bridges on in final assembly and then string them up. And then they'd center the strings on the fingerboard, yeah. tap it with a hammer, and then file all the notches. Wow, wow. Now we can have the, the notches pre-notch on center because everything's going to be on center. Technology. Yeah. Here he's loading the machine. So you can see the self-centering clamps and then the gate locating it at the nut. And here it'll, and then you can see all the different cutters on the machine. Yep. So it'll swap the cutters as needed. And then this is the pickup routing and everything. Is what you're talking about? Yeah. So this is the clamp, self-centering. Yeah, clamp. that's the self-centering clamp. And then this gate locates off of the nut, so the scale length is determined. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's going to route out the pickup cavity. Yeah. Wow. It'll be 10 in June. And before that, I would do a Fender for 11, before that, TV for 12, and then a shop for 9. That's what, uh, yeah, Jordan was telling us a little bit about that. That's fascinating. So this is uh, going on my 42nd year. Wow. And w an interesting thing is when we drill for the tail pieces or anything that has a hole, instead of drilling it, we'll use a router bit that's smaller and interpolate it so that way we can use one tool to do a variety of different hole sizes. And then it, it, the cutter lasts longer because it's not just a tip doing all the work. Is that awesome or what? <laughs> That's it. So that's going to be an SG61. Yeah, SG61. I was I'm looking at the tailpiece holes. I was thinking it was a vibrato, but okay. it'll be it'll be a 61 without the vibrato. Okay. Now it's doing the mounting ring holes. Yeah, if it didn't have the big stop tailpiece holes, then it would be either the sideways trim or the vibrola. Sure. I just played my first sideways trim. I didn't realize that was the case on the first. Uh, yeah. I guess it would have been the left wall at that point, right? Yeah, like yeah. That. And, you know, it, it's kind of a quirky thing. Yeah. Uh, and it, but it does have a particular character, you know. It, it affects the way the guitar balances, yeah. and it just has a very unique look. Billy Gibbons has been really enamored with them and puts them on all his guitars, or a lot of his guitars. So that's interesting too, that when people talk about, occasionally when they talk about SGs having headstock dives, I mean, really the case is it had that heavy hardware. That's why initially it, it kind of 
pass, right? It would have been balanced. Because it, it would have been balanced, there. right. Interesting. When you take that off, now that's when that happens. That makes which is sense. why Derek Trucks like to have that faux tail piece on his. Yeah. So now that's it. There it is. That's pretty cool. And then here's the Firebird with the wings glued on. Yeah. 